So, finally, after nearly two days, I get my chance on the stage. So, this is a panel session where we get to interact a little bit. And so, I need to introduce our panelists. We have, you've met them all before. We have Julia, Veronica, Francek, and Dr. Sandil. Now, everybody has submitted. We've had great questions from Google Moderator. We're also going to have a mic out on the floor if you want to ask some questions. Um, so let's get started. And I'm going to exert moderator's privilege by usurping everybody else and asking my question, which is, you'll come from different, different places in the world. Um, can you tell me about how Go has influenced the local community you live in? And you can interpret, really interpret that question in any way you want. Who wants to go first? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the one day, looking from the odd uh, community there, where so uh, I have not interacted much people beyond my team where in the different area, but uh, most of the guys. I mean, when I have spoken, do I have? Have you heard about a language called Go? They said, No, I don't. Uh, are there more job openings in Go? Then I'll start looking at it. So this is the first impression that I, I get to know when I talk to say. Have you started looking at Go? Where will that be a good job opportunities for Go? Okay, that is the first thing, uh, first reaction I see. And then, uh, if I, what I see is if I give a written code to them and then say, okay, why don't you start, have a look at the code and just spend one day on that and then don't say this is a new language, it's difficult to learn, just look at the code for one day. And the next day, I find that I don't have to tell them, go and start coding on that. I find in three days they are on the track. They find it easy and they, they it's very easy to adapt the code, the language. That's the opinion I found. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, so for me, I live in San Francisco, but I joined Google as a software engineer writing basically C++. So my relationship with the open source community was pretty much inexisting. And when I joined the Go team, I started uh, going around and I saw how the community changed a lot. Like uh, most of the meetups that I used to go before was more about this is the newest technology, this is the newest thing that I thought about. Well, with Go, people started talking more about philosophy. It was like the simplicity and composition and this, these three things, simplicity, composition, and, and uh, concurrency that keep on coming over and over rather than trying just to talk about the latest little library that someone created. And I think that that's something positive for everybody. Okay, so in my case, I come from Mexico, and it has been a bittersweet experience because um, the community right there is very small, <laughs> and we're like trying to uh, make it grow, but we're struggling a little bit. It's positive because we have new developers, but also many developers are very reluctant to pick okay. a new technology, but I think that's just not for Go for many languages in Mexico. But on the bright side, uh, since Go is a relatively new technology, uh, uh, those who are like, I don't know, trying Go um, have a different experience than trying, for example, Java or Python that are languages that have been already for a long time, out there for a long time. So Go, with Go, they, they find like an opportunity to actually contribute from the beginning. I, I don't know, it makes them feel special. <laughs> um, yeah, so I live in Denver, Colorado, and we have a pretty active uh, Go community there, and we had the privilege of hosting Go for Con last year. Um, and so I think, uh, I don't know, it's been an interesting experience. It's actually been my first time really participating in a programming community. Um, even though JavaScript has tons of meetups and stuff, I never went to them. Uh, so it was my first time going to like Go meetups and going to talks and conferences. And um, it's just been a very interesting experience. Everybody's been very open and welcoming. And uh, there's always somebody to ask stupid questions and not feel stupid about it. So I think it's been like a great experience. I, I think, like, as I mentioned in my talk before, it can be a little bit hard to ask dumb questions in other communities because there's always somebody there to point out how wrong you are, and I don't feel like anybody does that so far in the Go community. Awesome. Awesome. 
So, we have some questions from the people have asked, and they are sorted in order of popularity. And the most popular question is, can you give us an update on Go support for Android? And I'm going to throw it over to the man who can answer that. No. no. <laughs> this no. is going to be a long session. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, Go 1.4 uh, gave a little bit of support for Android, and it's, it was pretty much experimental. We're just trying to play with it and see where it goes. Uh, now we have a group of people, now there's four people working pretty much full time on this. And the goal is to have for Go 1.5, which is going to be in August, I think, yeah. Uh, so we will have um, uh, full support for Android with, uh, so for NDK, in, in important, it's not SDK, it's basically you will be able to write some, uh, the things that you used to write with C or C++. So basically games using OpenGL, uh, you will be able to use other things like audio, we're working on it. So basically, you should be able to soon be, uh, write games for Android and Go. Uh, then on top of that, there's uh, something pretty cool. I saw a demo by David Crusho. Uh He did Go Mobile build, and that generates an APK. I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. And then Go Mobile install, and in like two seconds, the app that he just compiled started running on his phone. And I don't know if you've done that ever with Java before, but normally it takes a little bit longer than that. So I'm really excited about that. Awesome. Maybe we'll try a question from the floor. So we have a variety of experience, a variety of uh, uh, skill sets being, being brought to bear here. So when asking a question, just consider the people who are up, up, uh, up on stage and think about the answers that they can give for you. So raise your hand if you want. Uh, yeah, we've got a question over there. I would like to contribute to the Go language, uh, to the actual Go language. So, uh, is are there any resources to from where I can learn about the internals of Go? I mean, I see a lot of words like G stack, M stack. I don't know. It's like, are there any resources to which I can refer to? Yeah, or, or I can have a go. Uh, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> the the, the go run time is changing very, very quickly. Um, th this is part of the privilege of having our own tool chain that we can, uh, we, we can move fast and change things other than other like other languages which might be built on LLVM or things like that. The downside is that you, you, you need to move at the speed that, that we move. And unfortunately, because the, the group of core contributors who have the skills to uh, make changes in the runtime, uh, are all at the same level. We unfortunately tend to tend to know what each other thinks. So you're right that it is a little bit inaccessible for new contributors. Do you want to contribute directly to the runtime, or are you interested in other parts of Go? I'm interested in other parts as well. Uh, it's just that uh, it it doesn't matter whether I'm contributing right now. I mean, I, I will contribute maybe after a year or two. But uh, so that I can gain the fundamentals right now. Like, okay. I just want to learn stuff. Sure. So the, the first answer to that is that we have a contribution guide. Um, we can get the link up later for you. I'll put it in, I'll put it in, in here. Um, and that describes the mechanics of, of how to contribute. There's another part of contributing to Go, which is really the, really the, um, the, the idea of talk about what you want to do and then do it. If you, if you do it the other way around, then you're unlikely to have a successful experience. So, Find an issue you're interested in. We have an issue tracker with quite a few open issues. If there's one that interests you, talk about on the Golang deck mailing list or on the issue about your proposal of how you want to fix it. And then if there seems to be general agreement, then go and do it. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, Thank I just wanted to add that then when you contribute to the Go, to the Go project, you're going to go through the amazing experience of having your code reviewed mm -hmm. by the Go community. And it's really enriching, I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> So we have another question from Google Moderator. Um, what are your views on Go as a, a first language to learn programming? I'm going to ask yeah. Dr. Sandil because he was very keen on this one. So let's see. So uh, I mean, unlike I mean, so I've been using age-old technology. I mean, languages like Foxbase, Foxpro, C++, and then I had not been switched to Java, or anything Ruby, or anything else. So I've been using C++ and C for a long time. And then um, 
uh, when I switched to Go, I did not find much of resistance. And uh, I have personally seen some of my team members who had been using MATLAB for a long time. And you, I mean, where you don't bother about the type of the variable, you don't have to declare the variable, just say x equal to 2 or start saying x of 10 is equal to 4 and then it automatically converts into a vector. So <clears throat> for them, I found that even it takes about a day or two to get into the notion of using Go language. And then once you start using the Go, I find that uh, as soon as you switch back to a, another ID where you start writing a C code, you find it a bit cumbersome. You, you start seeing that you, you forget to put semicolons now. Right? So that kind of addiction is too quick. So, so those guys were not even doing C++. They were starting to go as a first language. I think it's going to be a fresh, clean note and the learning curve could be even much faster. So that's my opinion. So you don't have to assume a lot of stuff where what you learned in C++ and you don't have to look for the same thing in the Go language. That's the yeah. key part. Anybody else have a view on Go as a first language for, for someone to develop in? So uh, I've, been, I've been thinking about it for a little bit and at the beginning I thought that Go might not be the best language uh, to start with because there's things like types and so on and maybe if you have to think about what type is 10, that's slightly more complicated that if you don't have to think about it at all. But then uh, for me it's actually a very good point to start because you have to think about things that are very important at the end of the day to become a good programmer. So you're going to have a pretty good guide on how to write good code. The, uh, the compiler errors, I think they're the clearest errors that I've seen in any programming language. I used to write C++ with templates for context. <laughs> So <laughs> you can imagine. And uh, finally, I, I really think that what we're missing to have more people learning Go as first language is someone really putting together a guide for them. Like we have the Go tour, but the Go tour is not for new programmers. The Go tour is for people that have programmed before and that already know they have all the concepts. So I really think that there's, a, there's an opportunity to contribute to the, to the community and, and help get this done. So if anyone's interested, let me know. <laughs> yep. Maybe we'll throw it over for another question from the audience. Who's got a question? Mm, at the back. You've asked a lot of questions. <laughs> if you want to ask a question, you have to go and sit on that side. Because they're underrepresented. Hi. It is possible not about Go, not about Go testing, Go test package. Go, Go has inbuilt testing package. Mm. Not about this. No one is talking about that. Everyone is talking about generally developer point of view, but I am a tester. I need to know about the Go test. So the question is, what is your, uh, what is our opinion of the Go, the testing package that yeah. comes with Go? It is possible uh, to do end-to-end -end testing using the Go test. Is it possible to do unit testing? Or Not unit, end-to-end -end testing. End-to-end. End-to-end testing, yeah. Okay. Um, what, what's, what's the panel's experience of using the test, the test package? Like, what are the things that... No tests? Nobody uses tests? <laughs> I, I have a small experience on that. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so uh, what I experienced that I felt is, uh, uh, I said I had written a code so I don't have to test it. Okay, so I am very confident in my code. So that's the first thing that any developer should take it out saying, I have written a code, this is perfect. Even after 10 days I see it, this code should be always right. Which I found it, as soon as I start writing different modules and then I started cleaning up the process of writing the module, how it should interact with other functions. And then I think of from the shoe of the third person who's going to use it. Because right now what we're writing is, say I write a single main file, I'm the one who is going to write, write it, right? But when I write components like this, what I showed, it's not me who is going to use it. It's the third person who's going to use it. Then after a few days, I start seeing it, uh, did I test this function? Is it, I, I start doubting my code, but this is not the way I was thinking the flow is. Then I thought, this is, this is must. Then one whole night I spent looking some of the code test videos and then started writing test codes for, uh, for each of those functions. I think that's a must. I mean, a good habit that you should start using it if you want someone else is going to use your code. That's my opinion. Okay. So the question is end-to-end -end testing in Go. Um, so at Pivotal Labs, we test drive everything. So I'm technically not allowed to write production code till I have a failing test. Um, and that's typically enforced by pairing. Um, so when we started to rewrite the CLI, in Ruby I was using RSpec. I was like full on RSpec, I love the DSL, and we're like, well, we don't have that in Go. So we're going to try the built-in testing framework. And we use it for a really long time. 
and got really far with it. Um, and then at some point, we started to wanting to do end-to-end -end testing. Um, and we struggled with that. So one of our guys in San Francisco actually wrote a library called Ginkgo and Gomega, which looks a lot more like our spec. Um, and I was like, oh, man, ONC, I'm not sure we need this. Like, I was pretty against it because I felt pretty comfortable in the, in the built-in testing tools. Um, and then I started using Ginkgo and Gomega. I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. So I think regardless of what testing framework you're using, um, the built-in one will get you very far. If you're used to RSpec, we'll take a look at Ginkgo and Gomega. He, they've got some really cool things for spinning up processes and shutting them down when the tests shut down. So end-to-end -end testing is a little bit easier. Um, you can do it in the built-in framework. There's just a lot more tooling you have to write. Where um, Because ONC was used to doing that with some of the Diego work, that they, they just built it in. Uh, so I think there's some really good tools. Um, we also use an assertion framework that escapes me right now. But there are some other tools that kind of take the rough edges off the built-in stuff, especially if you're doing application development and not library development. So if you're doing library development, the built-in tools are amazing because you're just writing little packages and functions and you're, you're testing those in isolation. But as they, they get bigger, you want some sugar on top of that, and some of the other tools will give you that. I, can't remember, I wish I knew what the other one was called. but um, Yeah, so you can do it. Um, I check out Ginkgo and Gomega, and they're really good tools. Thank you, Mike. OK, so the next question, high on the priority list. Can you share the details roadmap of Go for the next two years, right here and now? So <laughs> I mean, uh, two years, it's a long time. Um, the first thing to know that we're not planning on adding any major feature to the language. It's not in the plan. Uh, also, in the next two years, we're not planning to deliver Go 2.0, so that's, that's done. Uh, so what we're planning, basically, is we're planning on imp uh, imp uh, having better performance all around the board. So uh, improving our garbage collector, improving our scheduler, improving pretty much everything we can improve. Uh, we want also to have better tooling and also support for uh, more libraries, uh, more libraries, sorry, for more architectures. So at some point, Go Mobile, for instance, uh, should also run for iOS. So that's one of the things that should come. So. Cool. Are there any embed developers in the room? Is, is Kunal here? Yeah? Come up and take a seat. So can we take a question from the audience while we're doing this? Hi. Uh, my question is, how does Go compare to Python in writing network tools, like uh, packet injectors, web crawlers, and uh, port scanners like that. Like, because there are a lot of modules in Python to write this stuff. So okay. how does it compare to Python in this? So the question is, uh, is Go a good language, or how can we write in Go uh, network analyzers that dissect packets? I mean, uh, is there any uh, plan to use to these tools in Go? Can we write these tools in Go? I think, you I think it's more about. Uh, comparing all the all the myriad of tools that you have in Python mm. and having them in Go. Yeah, so it, you, you can absolutely write a network packet analyzer in in Go. It's just a question of pulling apart pulling apart the bytes. But if you're talking about are there pre-written libraries to let you do that? Definitely, that there are a lot there are a lot available in Python. There are two who unfortunately whose name escapes me at the moment, but there are people who are doing packet analysis and they've written some libraries in Go. For for this kind of general question of how do I do X in Go? Does everyone know about Godoc? Godoc.org? So Show of hands. Who's, used, who's been to Godoc.org? Ooh, OK. We've got some learning to do. Everybody, homework. Godoc.org. Godoc. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and it has a, search en has a search engine on the front page. So any keyword that you would search in PyPy, try it in Godoc and see what, what people have contributed. Yeah, I think the qu I, you're a student. Are you a student? Right. I think I know where this question is coming from because a lot of uh, colleges, universities actually teach a lot of Python mm. and use scientific methods and scientific libraries in Python. So if Go is going to support a lot of these, they'll start using it in schools and universities. Okay. So this is more about numeric processing. Uh, um, Only numeric? I, I would rather say any scientific processing. Okay. Yep. Matrix. The so matrix. If, it's, if it's looking for analogs for NumPy and uh, SciPy, there are again uh, I can, I'll have to get you the names afterwards, but there are a few people doing that kind of numerical analysis in Go. 
um, I think the Python package was called PyTables, and there, the author of PyTables is now rewriting that in Go because he's quite interested in Go. Yeah, but you realize that this is also an excellent opportunity for you to contribute if you find some scientific tool missing which is there in Python. Well, build it in Go. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, there's a C library called Come up on Lippy stage, Vijay. You can probably use LippyCap. Step Google. into the camera. Yeah, yeah. Fine. <laughs> I'll just, uh, just uh, take a look at LippyCap. Uh, it's a C library for network packet analysis. And use it from C Go and you are done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's BG for you. <laughs> okay, so thank you for joining me. The reason why I wanted to ask you is that we have a question about Go on embedded platforms, Internet, Internet of Things. Um, and the question is specifically, is it part of the roadmap to have a customized Go support on the Raspberry Pi? And the reason I'd, I'd like you to answer this is I think it's not really something for the standard library, but definitely this seems to fit well with Embed. Hello? Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, um, uh, so, uh, in case of Embed, right? So, yeah, in case of Embed, uh, we uh, compile our code, embed code for ARM architecture and Linux uh, OS already. So I would say uh, that kind of support is already there. But what uh, uh, people can look for, for or uh, even I do, is uh, as Go supports multiple other architectures, then uh, we start uh, you know coding so that uh, uh, we can support multiple uh, many other boards. For example, uh, Edison is a development board we are trying to focus on. Uh, after, uh, which is uh, up next in Embed. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. I hope the hope the author of that question is in the room. So one from the one from the list is about debugging. Everyone's favourite. So uh, I'll paraphrase a little bit. There are a few questions. It's, it's when can we expect a, a Go debugger uh, that will allow us to either debug in the same way we have GDB or that has IDE integration? Please. <laughs> So uh, there's the Go team is, is actually working on it. Like we have plans on trying to, to have a better way to not only debug a, a program, but also try to understand better what a program that is even running in production is doing. So there's an effort on that and trying to instrument. And, and there's, there's a lot of really complicated things that we're considering. Uh, but I think that that's something that's going to take some time. Uh, in the meanwhile, there's uh, efforts from the community, and there's uh, there's a guy I don't remember his name now, but he wrote uh, Delph, which is a pretty decent Go compiler, a Go Go debugger. So if you if you need to debug some Go, uh, I could definitely uh, consider trying Delph. Uh, there was a blog post on the Gopher Academy on it, so you can find it and learn more about it. Yeah, and we're throwing out a lot of URLs at the moment. We'll make sure that we put them in a in a page or something that. We, we can have access to. So, Karen, your question. Um, so, I actually have two questions. Um, <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> so, uh, the first question is, uh, I have uh, been hearing this a lot and this sort of bothers me. So, uh, I've heard that the Google Teams involvement in the Go language is sort of hemorrhaging the language, like it's making it uh, very specific to Google's needs, and uh, it's actually hurting the community as a whole. What's your opinion on that? And the second question, I'll just ask you both. Oh, let's okay. Wait, wait, one I'll question at a time, please. Yeah. So, so I guess that's for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I mean, yes, the Go, the 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 Google. So the Go team at Google uh, has as part of their mission to make Go as good as, good as possible. And we are continuously using it at Google, which means that there's a lot of use cases that come from Google. Uh, and they're actually, like one of the side effects of using Go at Google was our net, H net HTTP package is really good because we use it on production. So you can imagine that it has to work. Uh, saying that it's actually, that's actually hurting the community, I think it's, a little bit surprising because it's an open source community. Uh, the Go team is around 15, 20 people. The Go community is way bigger than that. So there might be things on which, yes, the Go team has a, has a word in saying, well, we consider that it's better not to do this or it's better to do this thing. But in general, it's 
pretty well uh, rationalized and explained to the community. So I, I haven't heard of something really specific other than the thing that I will mention. <laughs> <laughs> well, Veronica, Julia, as people who, uh, as people who are not core contributors who are, don't work for Google, um, can you do, do you think that the, uh, the the sponsorship of Go by Google is a good thing? Is a bad thing? Is neither? Do you have like, is it something that you think about as a negative or a positive? Uh, all right. Well, um, this is a personal view. Uh, I love Google and all the Google products, so I really love that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying this because you're here, but I really do. I mean, I'm an Android developer. I've also just embraced Polymer for front end and Go, so. I'm a Google girl, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, I well, it's something that I have been complaining about a lot. But on Twitter and my talk and uh, to Frances directly, uh, that maybe oh well, it, I know it's an open source community and everybody contributes. And, and as Julia said, um, you're very friendly and you have never made us feel like dorks, but um, still some documentation or some things are still very local. I feel them very local. I mean, uh, for the Android project, I, I have six, almost six years developing Android, and still when I try to develop my first uh, Go app for Android, I was taking baby steps again, and the documentation was not good enough for outside for outsiders. I mean, it was actually pretty good. It is pretty well documented for every function, every package, everything. But you had to know, I don't know, I just felt like left out a little bit. And I also promised two blog posts, one on Gopher Academy blog and other one to Satish. And I couldn't do any of them <laughs> because I still have to practice a lot in order to be able to transmit that knowledge uh, in a good way. So I, I would just ask for the Google people inside Google to, I don't know, do it like for dumb, for dummies. <laughs> the for dummies version of all of this. Well, you know what I mean. Has anybody struggled with this? <laughs> yeah. So not struggled. Um, uh, so the interesting thing Can you come Francesca into the frame actually has heard me speak about this in person is that the um, whenever oh, I'm sorry I'm sit down <laughs> um, so whenever so as a I am actually a relative noob at Go um, but I'm not a relative noob programmer so mic, whenever mic. you first get into Go what are you what are you told to do read the spec wow um, that's a that's a pretty high bar you should you should to be an expert builder or just a builder, you should have to read the spec. But to write Go code, you should not have to read the spec. And then the other one is, what's the other document that everyone tells you to read? What's the second piece? Effective Go. Effective Go. Effective Go is effectively a good document about the features of Go, but it does not take into account the developers who is writing Go. It doesn't actually tell you the mind state that you should be in to write Go. So it, it is a great document once you understand some of the semantics, but it's not a great um, it's not a great beginner. And to, um, to, to go on the point real quick, um, Android, develop, Android documentation is good. It actually will start you from a very beginning place, like hello world, this is your Go, and then it moves you on. And the Go is just move, it's missing that right now. And it's not a bad thing, it's just a young community thing. So we don't hate you yet, but um, <laughs> get it together. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Okay, so the, the big takeaway of this is documentation, 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 documentation. So we'll come back to your question, but can we have another one from the, there's a, someone at the back there? And we'll have you, and then and we'll. So uh, there are many uh, web uh, frameworks are developed in Go. So there, I've seen many are being developed. Yep. So mostly inspired by other, other language frameworks like Rails and Django, something. So, 
which one do you i mean is, you, do you recommend hdp package or uh, do you recommend the, using a framework instead of hdp package plain hdp package okay so the, the question is web frameworks or doing it with the hdp package what are your opinions panel so uh, about what's my favorite fr web framework the answer could be none but uh, i'm I, all, everything that i write on the web is pretty much things running uh, just REST APIs and so on, and I think that if you're running REST API, I think there was a really good talk about uh, how an HTTP, HTTP package allows you to do pretty much everything you need to do. Uh, then on top of that, there's things like Gorilla that might help, might be helpful if you're trying to do sessions and things like that. But I could use, I could just handpick the things that you really need. There's two really good talks uh, that I would recommend. There's one by Blake Miserani from uh, .dot Go go last year. Yep. Um, he was talking about how pretty much dependencies are technical debt that you're adding to your project, so you should be really careful when you're adding them. And the second one is, I forgot his name, he's a Ruby guy um, that he gave a talk in Gotham Go, and it's awful that I don't remember his name, but uh, he gave a talk about all the things, so basically he came from Ruby on Rails, and he asked, okay, where are the Rails for Go? So he basically gave a talk about all the things that could be helpful on top of the HTTP package. So Mark Bates. Exactly, Mark Bates. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> so <laughs> Julie, as a JavaScript developer who's embracing Go. What? Uh, well, so my suggestion, maybe it's not the most, I don't know, I guess it's pretty popular, uh, would be to do REST APIs, which I think Go is really good at, and you don't need a ton of frameworks on top of that or libraries. Uh, I just use Mux, Gorilla Mux, and uh, Imgo to set up my stuff and then learn JavaScript and do it that way. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Thank you. So your question, sir? Uh, just uh, it's a question related to the question earlier about Google's role in the community. If you could just talk a little bit about how decisions are made in, in the core community that drives the direction of the language. <laughs> so for instance, new commits, new ideas are coming from the community. How are they evaluated? What's that sort of team composed of? What's Google's role? Are there other corporates that are involved as well that you know, should play a role in this? If the community's direction starts to go in a direction that's different from what maybe was originally intended, sure. is Google still open to that? Could sure. you talk to that a little bit? So, uh, Could you repeat the question just summarize? So yeah, the, the question is basically how the Go team at Google makes decisions, basically, that impact uh, the Go community. Uh, the answer is completely openly. It's everything goes through a mailing list, and uh, there's developers that are not part of Google that have an equal voice on what happens. So uh, it's just on everything on, an, on emails, basically. So in other words, it's put to vote? It's, it's not really put to vote. Basically, the, one of the biggest ways of contributing to the way decisions are taken is, uh, so first is writing a proposal that is a full proposal explaining exactly what you're proposing, what are the side effects of it, and how it impacts the rest of the language, if it's a language feature. So similar to a PEP in Python, right, that you would put out, goes up to review? So similarly, uh, the development cycle runs at about a kind of six-month six cadence, and at the, the, towards the, the final, like when we've locked down the, the, the release, before we start the new development cycle, there is a, a call for papers on the mailing list, a like call for proposals. And it's really the, the and, and it's, it's not just for external contributors, people inside Google are, have to say what they're going to do as well for that cycle. And that's how the major components of work are planned. Yeah, and then the, the good thing is that Google Docs allows you to have a lot of comments. So you will see a Google Doc that starts having a huge discussion about every single th thing. And, and it's basically how it works. Yeah. That and emails. But is it, I'm sorry to button, but it's rumored that there is veto power among the core core contributors of uh, the core team of Go. That means unless all of them say yes, it's not going in. If one of them says no, it's probably just not going to get in for a long time unless overridden. That's something that I've heard very often from the beginning of Go. Uh, when Go was created, basically every single feature that was part of the language had to be agreed by the three creators. And, and that was the case. Right now, I guess it's still the case, but it's not only them. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So we have 
Who's the next there person? There was a question here. No, it was this gentleman here in the blue shirt. He's had his hand up first. Right, go for it. Okay, uh, then you. Uh, my question is not directly related to Go, but uh, I'm mm. using uh, Google's Web Toolkit since 2009. And uh, it's more related to Google, Google's efforts on open source. I'm, I'm very sorry. We don't have a lot of time. So, but I can come and talk to you about that afterwards, if that's okay. So it's this gentleman here, and then you at the back there. Uh, hi, yesterday I asked this question uh, uh, during the Seago presentation, uh, Seago talk. So is there any plan of Go packages being able to be used as libraries from other languages? Like how we can use uh, C libraries from Go using Seago? Uh, I think, uh, or also is it, uh, are there plans for dy uh, introducing dynamic uh, loadability support for Go? Okay, I think I know where you're going. So the, the, the question is, we can call from Go to C, and as long as Go is the start, we can call from C back to Go. Is it possible currently today to do the opposite, to have a C program and embed Go into it? And the answer to that is no. Um, are there any directions that are there, are there any discussions happening around that? There's a document, though, uh, written by uh, Ian Lance Taylor. It's called uh, Go Execution Modes that discusses all of these topics. There's no plan of execution yet, but there's basically an analysis of what, the, of what Go does now and what we could like Go to do in the future. Yeah. So. The, the, the short version of that is that the Go, the Go runtime, as embodied in that process, needs to own that process. It needs to own the signal handlers, it needs to set up the memory manager. Uh, if you wanted to embed Go in another program, there is a kind of issue of who does that, that setting up. And the, the, Ian's document is really detailing all that work. But as to when or who will do it, uh, there are no plans. So. Uh, and along the lines, I asked about dynamic, uh, uh, dynamic loadability support. So how about uh, Go packages being dynamically loaded from other Go programs? So it is, is that possible? Or is so it's, it's, very, it's very much similar to, the, to, to this, a dynamic loading uh, Go library or putting Go inside another program is really the same, the, the same thing. And un unfortunately, they're on the same schedule of, it seems like a good idea, but no one's working on it. It's discussed in the same document. Yeah. You've had your hand up for ages, so. And then, and then no, no. Who else? Please raise your hand, please, if you want to ask a question. All right. Uh, this is the second half of that question. Uh, so I run the Golang uh, Bangalore meetup group. And it's a lot of Thank work. You. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, it's actually a lot of work to do that, but one of the reasons I do that is because uh, while people who are fortunate enough to work at startups or own their own companies, it's a lot easier for them to adopt whatever they want to do, right? But uh, for people still working at consultancies or, uh, you know, like the Wipros, the Accentures, the Infosys, it's not really up to them. The only way they can suggest that Go be used is if the managers or the people with the decisive, uh, decisive power get to hear about Go, so yeah. the meetups, right? But one of the things which I think is working against this entire effort is, uh, funnily enough, every time there's a Rust announcement on Hacker News, a few people come in there and say that from their reliable sources, people in Google are actually indifferent towards Go. Like they don't care about Go. And in fact, it's uh, very surprising that there is nobody from Google India in this conference. Right, so. Anyway. So that was kind of a big question. Yeah. Um, I, 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 can't, I can't answer the question about why there's no one from Google India here. Um, uh, the, Satish. Yeah. <laughs> but but to, to, to come back to your other part of the question, which was why are uh, most people in Google actually indifferent, indifferent about to Go? Go? They don't care about Go. I think this can only really be answer, answered with an opinion. So I, I I think that's just false. And I would, I would have to agree. Okay. So now, we've only got a few minutes left. I want to get the people on that side of the room. Right. I'm, I'm really sorry. We've only got maybe two, three questions at most. Uh, I've I want to know, is there any plan to include any internationalization package, something like GNU get text as part of the standard library? Will there be internationalization in the standard library? Uh, I know there's a big effort on uh, having better support for internationalization. Yeah, I 18N. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I don't know when it's, I don't know when it's gonna be done, uh, but there's someone from the Go team that works in that, and yep. he's been working on crazy things like capitalization of weird languages. Yep. I'll, and I'll come and talk to you about it afterwards. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about that later. Yeah. So next question, yes. Oh no, it's really back out the back. He said he's hand up for it. Sorry, just and then we might close on you. Hi, uh, I used uh, Grid GWT and mm -hmm. uh, GWT became you know more adopted after the tooling you know that was introduced and you know more tooling you know added by Google. So uh, in terms of uh, GoLang you know getting adopted you know better in enterprises, you know, mm -hmm. so are there any plans to have something easier way for an enterprise developer to adopt uh, GoLang in, in terms of an IDE okay. Okay, and debugger so integration? And you know instrumentation profiling stuff like that. Okay, so that's similar to your similar to the, the end of your question. What I might do is reserve my right to answer that at the end of my my keynote because I want to make as much use of the time as we can. But I will will answer that. So there was one more question over there. So we have recently seen a lot of Go UI uh, libraries popping up, like mm -hmm. graphical user interface libraries. Are there any plans to include them in the standard libraries? Maybe like the database slash SQL library. Not that I know. Uh, there's uh, new packages that are coming, like uh, QML and OpenGL is going to help a little bit to that too. Uh, there's the Android effort that may help a little bit in that, but there's no there's no official support for that yet. If there's enough of them that we see the need to have kind of a uniform interface for all of those, which is what's the case with database, then yeah, it could make sense, but not for now. There's a package by And Labs. It's called UI. So it links with the uh, Windows interface on Windows and GTK on Linux and Cocoa on Mac. So maybe something like that in the standard library is not uh, is not in the near plan. I don't know about any plans on doing that. And adding things to the standard library uh, has a really important cost, which is you cannot change it. Yeah. So it's not going to be done anytime soon. But it's something. It's definitely something that could be proposed for the open for the community. So if you're really interested in that, uh, start the movement. Okay, we are well out of time. I want, can I have a great round of applause for our speakers tonight? <laughs> Julia, Veronica, Francis, Dr. Sindio. Thank you very much for your questions. All right.